most big advances in knowledge and their applications in industry are associated with a new tool or a new instrument. The telephone, the turbine, and the radio valve are examples. My life has been devoted to the study of new instruments and to electrical measurements of the very highest position. And in recent years, I have witnessed the development of two new branches of electrical engineering based on the precision use of a new instrument, one in which I have always been keenly interested. I had the good fortune to have charge of the electrical standards of Great Britain for 20 years, following in a very limited fashion in the footsteps of Maxwell, Kelvin, Rayleigh, and Lazarus. In 1910, when I measured the ohm in centimeter gram second units, I measured intervals of time of about 20 minutes within a few parts in a million. Shorter intervals of time, such as a second, could not be measured with accuracy without the aid of a tuning fork and an oscillograph like that of Dudell's. Then J.J. Thompson produced the cathode ray tube. And from it, a precision instrument developed, the cathode ray oscillograph. And with it, intervals of time as short as a millionth of a second could be measured with fair accuracy. In the First Great War, radio communications developed very rapidly, but radio measurements were far from accurate. Many of the phenomena connected with direction finding, fading, and skip distances could not be explained. The scientists had forgotten a discovery made by Balfour Stewart several decades before. When Balfour Stewart was superintendent of Kew Observatory, he studied magnetic storms and he proved beyond doubt the existence of an electrical conducting layer in the upper atmosphere. But there were very few who remembered this. Subsequently, Canelli and Heaviside rediscovered this layer. There were, however, mathematicians who satisfied themselves that it was quite impossible for radio waves to travel round the Earth. And it was left to Marconi and a number of amateurs to demonstrate the practicability of round-the-world radio. After these measurements had been made, Appleton transmitted radio waves vertically upwards and measured the interval of time between their transmission to and reception from the upper conducting layer. In this way, he actually measured the height of the conducting layer, and he did this with that wonderful precision instrument, the cathode ray oscillograph. After Appleton's measurements, Watson Watt, using the same instrument, observed the reflection of radio waves from aircraft. Now, radio waves travel 1,000 feet in a millionth of a second, and so it appeared possible to measure the distance of an aircraft with an error not greater than 500 feet if time could be measured within one millionth of a second. Thus, a great new branch of electrical engineering, radio location, was born. Increased accuracy had now been achieved with direction finding instruments. And with the aid of radio location, navigation at sea and in the air entered a new and much safer era. The same instrument, the cathode ray oscillograph, in a developed and modified form known as the emitron, has led to yet a new field, another field of electrical engineering. I refer to television. Marvellous as it may appear to locate aircraft by means of radio echoes, it appears to me to be an even greater triumph to transmit radio signals varying in intensity at the rate of two million a second and to receive and transform these into patches of light properly placed so as to form a moving picture and a very good moving picture too. It is, I think, fitting that in radio location and in television 
Great Britain should, at least for the present, lead the world, for both are based on instruments developed from the cathode ray tube which was first produced at the University of Cambridge. <laughs>